Hi, you're on Star Scene. Today we are chatting to two guitar legends, James Williamson from the Stooges and Dennis Tech from Radio Birdman. They've collaborated on a new album. They did have an EP before that. And this album's two to one. It's out today, September the 18th on Cleopatra Records. Hey, James. Hey, Dennis. Welcome. How are you? Hey, Mary. How are you doing? Good, thank Good, you. Mary. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. I wanted to start by asking a few questions about being in the Stooges and Radio Birdman. Now, both of you really revolutionaries in style and sound. But when you first started, how difficult was it to be taken seriously? We, we, were, we were taken very seriously by a very small group of sort of degenerate people. <laughs> and, and that was it. And the rest, no one else took us seriously at all. Um, and very slowly, we did develop a following um, on the coasts, mostly, of the United States. And that's, that's, all we, that's all we did at that point in time. It wasn't until uh, the, the CBS um, contract and the Bowie connection that we actually went outside of the U.S. And, and so... It took many, many years. Uh, the Stooges before I was in it was two albums and all the touring that went behind that. And then, then the Raw Power album and even that and all the touring that went around it um, was not successful. It was only much, much later in time that, that we became more popular. And appreciated. Yes, and appreciated. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I have a theory about that. My theory is that um, the sound that we were making at that time, the guitar sound especially, was something that nobody else did. And so it took the other bands that, that imitated that style, the Sex Pistols and, and uh, all the various different bands that came along after us that made it acceptable to all the a wider audience so that they, it, we sounded you know, contemporary when they went back and listened to us because they had heard it so much from their all their other bands. So I think that's yeah. kind of what happened. Yeah. And um, yeah. of course, we have Radio Birdman who came up and um, Dennis, you were really influenced by James's guitar work. Yes, I was. Um, for me, you know, that came out in 73 the year before Birdman started. And I was in another band then called TV Jones. And um, yeah, the, that guitar playing to me was a revelation. I mean, I was familiar with the first uh, evolution of the Stooges and, and they had Ron Ashton playing guitar and that was, that was great too, you know, but, but Williamson uh, with raw power, it was a whole, it was another leap, you know, quantum leap ahead again, and I hadn't heard anything like it. And um, yeah, we tried to emulate that, tried to be, tried to get some of that magic, you know, and, and use it. And then with the reunions and coming back into it, how different was the touring and the being accepted and playing to larger audiences? Night and day, night and day. I. I, uh, you know, I came in at, in 2009, and by that time, they were already well established, and, um, you know, we were playing to very, very large audiences, and, and also festivals, and so it was just a um, completely different scale of uh, the entertainment business, and we, we had actually turned kind of more or less professional, where we actually showed up on time and, you know, <laughs> did what we were supposed to do, you know, that kind of stuff. That's very, that's very unpunk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was, I had the opportunity to be part of, uh, of one of their shows uh, when they did a Ronnie Ashton Memorial. Uh, it was like a tribute to Ronnie two, two years after he passed away. And, and uh, I was shocked at the level of professionalism and they, it was, it's that thing sort of went off like a space shuttle launch. It was, it was done so well and with very little, you know, left to chance. And, 
it's the exact opposite of the Stooges that I knew back when I was a teenager. Yeah. It was really um, organized in that way, this guy named Henry. Cool. Um, and that's where you two met and um, decided to collaborate with the first EP. When did you decide to make 11 original new songs? We'll get into the album now. It's fantastic. I've loved it. We're going for that. It was probably about about last summer that we uh, got the got the suggestion really from Cleopatra. Um, I had been working with them on some little side projects, doing guest guesting on a few people's albums, and uh, so I was in pretty close contact with them. And Matt Green from Cleopatra suggested, you know, that would be a great idea if you guys would do it. And I talked it over with Dennis and, and we agreed, you know, why not? <clears throat> so here we are. Fantastic. And how difficult was it to come up with these new, new songs and new ideas? Well, you know, it's like a birthing process. You, you never know if it's going to be an easy childbirth or a difficult one. <laughs> and and, and uh, having 11, 11 of these children come out, it, it, it was... Uh, some of them were easy and some of them took a lot more effort on my part anyway. But, but, you know, we're both James and I are pretty task oriented people. And, and we, we didn't sort of wait around until the last minute to, to get things done. We started working on it right away and, and then got the basic song ideas down and then tweaked them and fine tuned them until they were ready to go. And so, yeah, it was a lot of work, but, but it was it was good work mm. on that EP that we did together, Acoustic KO. Um, those weren't covers; those were songs, all songs that James wrote. Yep. Back then. Yeah, back then. Yeah. Back then, yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, the 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 thing about the album was that we, because we, you know, we, as Dennis put it, are task oriented. We had it all figured out as to when we had we had a certain pure amount of time when we had a deadline to hand over the album to Cleopatra. So we had it all mapped out as to, you know, write the songs in here, uh, record the songs here, you know, mix the songs here, master and so on. And we got we got it pretty pretty right on, except for we got it through the mix part and then COVID hit. Luckily we did not have to go anywhere after that. We just had to master the record. And Cleopatra helped us to get that done. And so here we are now. So we got, we've got a record coming out. Very lucky, very lucky. And in four different colors, I've ordered the red one. <laughs> uh, good. Yeah, good choice, good choice. Now, I love how fast it is and how raw it sounds. The music might be fast and uplifting, but the lyrics are deep and sometimes foreboding. You've got, you know, stable, more empty promises. Don't try to sell that stuff to me. Take a look around at damage done. Climate change, birthday present. I just hope you guys don't know when my birthday is because I'd hate to have you wrap up all your fears for me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to send a message with especially take a look around and climate change? I, I, Dennis writes everything that he does himself. I don't write the lyrics, and so I, I write the music. Mm. Um, I certainly wanted to get through to people on, on all the music that I wrote. And I, I had some very good people I was working with, uh, Paul Nelson Kimball and Frank Meyer on Take a Look Around, uh, and Dennis, of course, on, on some of the other ones too, like Climate Change. And so it's a mixed bag, and um, there's there's there is somehow this, like you say, this undercurrent of of uh, you know depth in those songs. Uh, I I don't know what where that comes from exactly, but um, it, it's just a kind of nice thing that it's all happening when people feel a lot of depth in their lives, right? We do live in strange times, and, and they're, they've gotten even stranger for, since we wrote those lyrics last year until, until now. So it's, I think some of that 
it just comes through as a as a zeitgeist or a, you know it's just part of the times that we're in the the lyrics you know i don't i don't plan them when i write them i don't plan them to give a particular message or i'm not writing propaganda but i'm i am writing observations and those observations can be external ones like holding a mirror up to society and or things that we're seeing in um, in the world like on climate change or it could be an inner mirror like that shows like some of the demons within you know like on things like birthday present but um but that one lyric that you mentioned about um uh, don't try to sell that stuff to me that's a brilliant lyric but that 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 was by uh, uh paul nelson kimball that he wrote that friend of james on stable that's an excellent film clip as well in the recording studio where we did the backing tracks for the album all the, you know all the basic rhythm tracks and uh so the the group shots that are in that video were filmed in the studio where we recorded the album and then um you know a film crew came by one day while we were working in there and they they shot that footage and then the footage of me singing in the vocal booth yep was was done at another studio where we were recording vocals so it's all it's all real context for what we were actually doing i wish that i wish that we had done another video because they turned out to release two singles and and they didn't have another video for that but you know we, we knew we were going to need at least one so we just added that to the recording but the uh time but the thing is you know we were trying to get through in a certain amount of time so we didn't have a luxury to spend too much time recording videos but it came out all right what would you have done for jetpack nightmare that'll be a that'll be a left to your imagination <laughs> <laughs> i love the cover art of the album as well it's brilliant that was yeah, we did too we didn't know that was going to come out that way. It was it was presented to us by the art department and uh, Cleopatra Records sent this over and said, what do you guys think about this for a cover idea? And uh, we both thought, man, this is fantastic. Mm. Of course, I love old comic books, you yep. know, and, 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 and I love that that art that they used to do on on those really old ones before the comics code came out and you had to clean it up. And uh, th those are really great images. Mm. Excellent. I'll just go back to take a look around. I love the female backing vocals on that. The, the, there are two singers. Uh, yep. One is Petra, Petra Hayden. And I don't know what your jazz background is, but uh, there's a very famous jazz bass player uh, named Charlie Hayden and Charlie Hayden has been on so many jazz records big time jazz records uh, look him up you know he's just fantastic and he and his wife had quadruplets and so they're all sisters the Hayden sisters and they can all sing but Petra in particular is just like perfect pitch yeah. and um the other girl, Andrea Wass, is also somebody uh, that has been on a number of thing projects that I've worked on. Uh, so they were sang together, and they're they're just fantastic. I, I love the the way they sound. Yeah, I do have to say also though that I love the harmonica in Small Change, Dennis. Thank well you. done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I you know I'm not really a harmonica player, but I play harmonica. <laughs> And, uh, and I have done on several recordings in the past and, and way in the old days back, you know, before Radio Gurban, I used to do that live too. Wow. And it's only recently that I've sort of picked up the harmonica again and started blowing on it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Yep, it's fantastic. James, again, this is another, this was another uh, example of James getting the best, the best out of me that I had. He sort of, Held my held me to it until I got a good a good take. 
That's great. Um, have you enjoyed working together? Obviously you have because um, I can see both of you um, and the outcome is brilliant. Um, were there any funny moments or something unusual that happened during the recording or the making of this album? I can't think of any other than, than when we got over to Hawaii to do the vocals. Um, it just started pouring like crazy, just pouring. And so it made our days interesting. Sometimes the roads would be closed and you have to do all kinds of funny things to get to, to the studio. But, you know, that's, there was nothing interpersonal, no interpersonal problems that I can think of. And um, I would love to say, I can't wait for you to guys to tour. And you told me, yes, we're coming at the end of the year. But that's not possible. Yeah, no, we're not thinking that far ahead at this <laughs> point. And, and we don't know how far ahead that's going to be. So that that discussion is just going to have to wait until a later time to, yep, to have. Definitely. Yeah. What's next for you two, individually or together? Um, we haven't, we'll see how this thing works out for Cleopatra and, 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 you know, we, James and I haven't even discussed this yet at all. It's just too early, but I think if they wanted us to, to do something more in the future, I'd, I would be open to the idea because this was so good. Um, and personally, I, 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 I need to do another solo album and I have it written and ready to go. And I just have to, be allowed to travel to where the studio is. <laughs> Can you bring the studio to you? Like everyone's got the home office now. Yeah, but not, not the kind of stuff we do. You really need a good room with, with uh, real drums in it that sounds good. Yeah. 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 No. Oh, well, I can't wait to hear that. What about you, James? I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to put one foot in front of the other one and try to survive this thing as long as it takes to, to get on the other side of it and uh, not really trying to put too much, uh, you know, on myself, but other than to get, you know, do these types of things for, for Cleopatra to help promote the record. Excellent. Uh, I've only got two more questions to go. Um, firstly, if you were to describe this album the sound of it in food form, how would you describe it? Food form. I was going to say tacos, but that, that's <laughs> sort of too Mex too. It's not really uh, Mexican food. Um, I would say sashimi because it, it's, it's pure and exactly what it is. Yep. There you go. That's good. I yep. like that. Last question. What is your scene? I love playing records and listening to them. And, and I like picking up the acoustic guitar in the house and playing it. And so that would be a big part of it right there. But I also like to go swimming in the ocean. And, I, and you know, I play tennis every Thursday afternoon. And, um, and I live on a little farm and, and I spend a lot of my time um, making coffee. You know, pretty, yeah, we... we we roast it and, and put it in bags and sell it on the internet. Uh, and what's the site? It's, it's Tecona, T-E-K-O-N-A, coffee.com. I can vouch for this coffee. I'm one of his biggest customers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. James, what about yourself? What's your scene? Well, I, you know, I, I, I also like to stay, um, you know, with an exercise routine and, and to uh, you know, spend a lot of time hiking. And I also play a lot of tennis. And so I'm, you know, I just try to stay healthy and um, do, a, you know, do whatever I can. I mean, these days it, it's so crushingly boring because we can't go anywhere. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, times I'm just, you know, starving for mental stimulation, but, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm hanging in here. I think, uh, fortunately I've got my family, although we're all, we're all spread out, but we talk to each other all the time. So, you know, we can keep it together and, and uh, that's the main thing.
thank you so much for your time. Uh, good you, luck with the album out today on uh, Cleopatra Records. And um, I look forward to talking to you guys with the next album, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully we'll have a coffee one day soon. Sounds good, Mary. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.